present for a group photo. exceptional research libraries and I wanted to drop by and say a few words to all of you about the significance of the humanities in American life and this administration's recognition of their importance. There isn't a more appropriate place in all of the White House to do that than right here in the Roosevelt Room. People tend to forget it but besides being a soldier, an outdoorsman, and a statesman, Teddy Roosevelt was a humanist in the best sense of the word, a gifted scholar, an author, and was as much at home in the realm of ideas as in the world of action. It's a, incidentally, I would just like to interject that there is a new piece of, uh, I'll call it art or whatever, here in the Roosevelt Room, thanks to the family. Theodore Roosevelt, who recently came and presented the first time it has ever been on public exhibition, but it will now be housed here in this room, and that is Teddy Roosevelt's Nobel Peace Award. And uh, we're indeed proud to have it here. The world was different then. He got it sitting on a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> representative of the Japanese and the Russians and, uh, and peace came. <laughs> I wish I'm sure that he'd approve of the grants that were announced today, especially since they will be matched at least three to one by private contributions. 
Back in 1933, Alfred North Whitehead listed the five most important qualities of a civilized society as truth, beauty, adventure, art, and peace. Well, I don't think anyone's improved on that simple but profound formula. We must never forget that it is the humanities, their study, their preservation, and their growth that provide the intellectual underpinnings for our values as a civilization and deepen our understanding and appreciation of truth, beauty, adventure, art, and yes, peace. Now, you and I know, and Bill Bennett is certainly aware, that it is often the arts, especially the performing arts, that seem to receive the lion's share of public attention. As a former actor, I can't really complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel that it's important for us all to remember the cultural foundation for so much of the great art we all enjoy, and our ability to appreciate it and to draw their inspiration from the humanities. So I want to take this occasion to express my personal commitment to the humanities and to reaffirm the administration's support of the National Endowment for the Humanities. While the federal government doesn't have the resources to be the major source of funding for the humanities, our administration has shown that it can use its limited resources to support the basic disciplines and essential activities of the humanities. It also has shown that through example and encouragement, the federal government can attempt to stimulate increased private sector giving for the support of the humanities. We believe that such federal activity is appropriate, but the humanities are crucial for the vitality of our nation's educational and cultural life and the maintenance of our civilization. This also applies to the 13 outstanding independent research libraries that are represented here today. So I thank you all for coming and for the vital contribution that each of you is helping to make in our life and through our life as a free and a creative society. Thank you. Jefferson in this time, uh, who was supported in part by a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities, will send the whole set over. Thank you very much. This is, you know, there's a study about an alumnus who visited his alma mater and while he was waiting to speak with this, the former economics professor, he notably shocked that the professor was giving the same examination that he'd given years ago. And when the former student asked the professor how he could get by giving this same economic test and not expect cheating, the professor said, not to worry. We leave the questions the same, we change the answers. <laughs> yes, sir. I can't resist also. I know I have told this, but recently come to my attention. Having a degree in economics, you see, I can say some of these things. The, uh, I have to take your time for a moment and tell about the three gentlemen who found themselves facing St. Peter. And St. Peter said there was only room at the time for one, and they decided that whichever one of them was of the oldest profession would be admitted. And one spoke up immediately and said, well, I'm a doctor, so I guess that means me. Because he said the Lord made Adam, and then he made Eve out of the rib of Adam, which required surgery, and therefore that must be the oldest profession. And another gentleman shouldered him aside and said, I'm an engineer. And before that took place, all was chaos. God created, ended the chaos and created the world in six days. He must have been an engineer. Thought he had it settled until the third gentleman said, 
I'm an economist. Where do you think they got all that chaos? <laughs> <laughs> well, now some of you may know I was a member of your committee in 1974 when it was still called the United States Industrial Payroll Savings Committee. And I was volunteer chairman for state governments that year as governor of California. So this is something of a reunion. <coughs> see that John DeButts is here, and uh, John was chairman that year, and George Schultz was secretary of the treasury, and uh, all three of us have changed our status a bit since then. I may have gotten the best of the deal, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm asked about being president, and I just have to say, I like the job. <laughs> so I may stick with it for a little while. But uh, we all have responsibilities for looking out for our country, and that's why we're here. As volunteers for the Savings Bond Program, you're all serving in the best tradition of American volunteerism. Your work, as you know, is vital in our efforts to manage the debt and reduce its cost to the taxpayers. Today's Savings Bond Program is the best that's ever been offered. And this is in large measure due to the work of John Bryan and his 1982 committee, who helped get the needed legislation through the Congress. Since the payment of market-based interest on bonds was authorized in late October. The public and the press have given it high marks, their best reaction to savings bonds in many years. Financial columnist Sylvia Porter, a longtime supporter of bonds, called it a decent deal and suggested the people participate because they'll be getting a break on saving bonds that's never been offered before. Sylvia and other supporters whose enthusiasm ebbed because the Treasury could not offer competitive rates have come on strongly on our behalf now that we've added a whole new dimension to the system. Reform, of course, was long overdue, and with your help, we're going to put the savings bond program back in the mainstream of economic choices. And make no mistake, America needs a strong savings bond program. Our future economic health depends on it. As leaders of our nation's top businesses and state and local, local government units, you can help the program succeed by making sure that the payroll savings plan succeeds. Your role is essential because 80% of bond sales are made through payroll savings. And your leadership will increase the savings and every dollar in savings bonds means one dollar less the Treasury will need to borrow in the market, reducing the pressure on interest rates and freeing more funds for private investment. I'm counting on each of you, and I want you to know that I appreciate very much the task that you've taken on. You know, your 85 chairman, Jim Robinson, is a very persuasive fellow. When we met a few weeks ago at the time I authorized the market-based rate, he took advantage of that moment to sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> and now that's what I call closing a sale. Thanks to Jim's salesmanship, I was the first person to sign up under the new program. Follow his lead. Sign yourself up and sign up your fellow executives. And if you do, 1983 will be the best savings bond campaign year ever. Your committee has a unique tradition. Many members have led highly successful, innovative campaigns. George Stinson led the bicentennial bond drive, one of the best. Chuck Piliad put the blimp behind saving bonds in 1978 and has kept it there. And other committee men have graduated from committee to bigger and better things. Bill Miller, for instance, became chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. And then Don Regan did his share too. He spent nine years from 71 to 80 selling savings bonds in New York. Now he's joined a new firm down here in Washington where he's even <laughs> being even more effective. I look to you to continue the tradition of accomplishment. Your work for savings bonds will be remembered, and you are offering an example of good citizenship of which you can be rightfully proud. So I just want to thank you for your efforts and say God bless you and, and carry on. But don't bother to try to sell me. I've already been sold. <laughs>
start up. Mark, let's go. Let's sit down any place. It doesn't make a difference because they're going to change after the photo. That was the most interesting dinner the other night. I mean, I thought it was a social event. We went to the South African Embassy, and just before dinner, they announced that four of us were going to go in the living room at a table with a you know working dinner. And the other 60 guests went in the dining room. This guy had charts and maps. <laughs> I was it going on Saturday night to the live. It's a new working dinner. When you really work this over, as he talked, the South and South. These are his sisters, Bonnie and Becky. Well, hello there. And uh, Mrs. Oh. Hill and Mr. Let me, Hill. Let me get you yes. in a little bit further. You're <laughs> hidden over there by. Hello, uh, Mr. President. Yes. Hello there. Mr. Massey. You see you. You're going to be in this conference. Hello. Mr. Shirley. Mr. President. Hi. Hi. Well, I know we're going to take some pictures over in front of the yes. Yes. fireplace there. But, uh, First, I'm going to sign out a letter over here, which I'm very yeah, interested in. Really? Sign the proclamation yes. from when I'm not here in the White House, yes, I have a ranch up in California. Yeah, I think so. Right. I was just going to say. Yes, sir. Do you have a postcard? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
That's what I do. Yes. It's. Well, I see you're in California too. Yes, so that's right. That's right. Well, it's not too far from your place. Sometimes they don't very often let me get out there, but now, <laughs> when they do, well, that would be very nice. You bet. Are they wild? Our horses? No, they're pretty good. They're well-trained horses. Eh? They, they give you a good ride. Weston <laughs> has a beautiful new white one. Oh. Are they black? What? Are they black? No. Are they black? Not if you know how to ride them. No. He's a California too, Mr. President. Yeah. Sure. Mr. President, you want to come and sign the proclamation? Yes. Why don't you gentlemen come over? I don't know. You won't be. Why don't you come over here where I'm going to sign that proclamation? And so that all of them can see you. What if what if I put you right up here beside me? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, is that okay? And then I shall. Now, I'm very happy to sign this letter because this letter is declaring man January the March of Dimes month. In the March of Dimes, this is its silver anniversary, its 25th year. Last year it raised $80 million just to help. Put that a little darker. <laughs> 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 Well, I'll tell you, that's my name, but it's very poorly written on account of I was kind of busy here. <laughs> uh, although it's not too well written any time. You, you learn to write, and you write better than I do. But um, this, I'm really very proud to participate in this, because this is to help boys and girls learn sometimes with problems. So just like you, they can swim, and they can be active, and and they can What's have a lot of fun in life. What? What does this say? Well, that's the letter that I wrote. That proclaims that January, this coming January, everybody in America will know it's the March of Dimes. Now, well, one thing first, I know your eye is on that jar. <laughs> first, I'm going to give you, uh, my name is, uh, I'm going to give you this pen as a souvenir of this occasion. Maybe I better let your sister or your parents hold it. And uh, for you and your sisters, this but is. I have this that's what you have. <laughs> it's a jar, and that's the presidential seal on there and my name. But inside that jar are jelly beans. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of sealed. So I, think, I think your mother and your sisters are going to have to help you uh, help you get at that. Can you get now, a, Can you give me a big squeeze? <laughs> you do? Okay. I'll bet if he can take it, I can take it. Sure. 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 Uh, hey, that's, that's pretty way. strong. Hey, show the other shoulder. The other shoulder. The other shoulder. You kind of. Yeah. Do it with your head on this shoulder on account of those fellows with the cameras. All right? <laughs> now, we're going over in front of the fireplace. And have some pictures. You want to get in? There's a fire. Oh, no. We just stand in front of it. You don't do that. We even got a screen in front of it. All right. because it's the end of the day. All right. Then I turn around now. Don't we want the family Let's get one, just the two of you Just the one? Judge yeah. Bartlett, can we come back? Yeah, that's it. We have, as soon as they're done here, why don't we have them step in? Okay, why don't you just kneel down and put it Great. I live in Paso Robles, too. Yes, he lives where you live. So I need a picture with you for my five children, okay? Okay, why don't we have the family come and join now, please? I'm moving my ass to go look at all the cameras at the same time. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. Come on in here. Mother? Good. Do you know something? 
Christmas stockings for Santa Claus. How about those? You get that one. And um, Mrs. Brandon gets this one. She gets this one. Well, thank you very much. And Rudolph's saving our These shall be hung in the White House because that's where we're going to have Christmas this year. Oh. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. We have, we have a few other little things. This one of the city of Pass Rolls. Um, oh, thank you very much. Look and look back. Back. <laughs> Hey, your picture. <laughs> well. These are pictures for funny letters from your class. From your class? Thank you very much. I'll look forward to reading those. I really will. Really and then, I don't know if you want to do this or not, but this is from my brothers and I have a store in Pass Robles, and we have a baseball team. We'd love to have a picture of you to put on our wall. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, once I was, before I was this, I was an actor, and I, I played a very great baseball player. Sure. <laughs> Grover Cleveland Alexander. Right. Oh. I've seen it. Old Alex. That's what I've done. Come on, Vinny. That's the president's got so much more to do. Yeah. I don't know where we're going. The president's got 